Hi, I'm going to give you an update on the Resium Global Fund. I'm going to talk about how the fund performed over the last quarter and the year to date, and also just give you a little bit of detail with regards to how we currently positioned. Uh, the fund has performed very well year to date. It's up 16.6%, uh, and that's sort of well above the MSCI All Countries World Index. I think this does reflect a bit of a shift towards value strategies in particular. Um, as you will know, being a value investor, it's been a very tough time over the last few years. Definitely the market environment has favoured more growth momentum type portfolios. And um, we've had a lot of exposure to areas of the market such as the resources industry, which has been undervalued, but has become even more so. Um, and only this year to date has seen a turnaround in that. Obviously, that's been one of the big drivers of the performance for the year to date has been our exposure to the resources sector. We still retain a meaningful allocation to that sector within the equities component of the fund. But as you might expect, with prices having rallied very strongly, we have pulled that exposure back somewhat. Uh, what's very interesting is that some of the new investments in the fund over the year to date have been in industrial businesses, which are very high quality in nature, um, but which are somehow related to the commodity cycle. So in many respects, they have, for instance, a part of their business which provides a service or a specialized product to uh, energy or, or metals producers, and as a result has seen those segments of its business coming under pressure with the cycle, having been through, obviously, a, a low point. So we've increasingly exposed the portfolio to some of those businesses, um, which include names such as um, Alpha Laval, Rotalk, Agreco, and more recently, over the last quarter, we introduced a position to a business called ALS which stands for Australian Laboratory Services, which does a lot of testing within the minerals and energy industries. So those are businesses which are not direct producers, but they have become cheap uh, for similar reasons in that they are or have a part of their business which is related to the commodity cycle. Um, so what that's enabled us to do is to diversify the portfolio uh, quite significantly if you compare the portfolio to how it was two years ago um, within the resources component as higher quality businesses have become cheap. We've been able to sort of broaden the sort of direct resources exposure and we've been able to obviously allocate to businesses in various different industries um, which have become cheap for a similar reason, but which obviously represent quite different exposure across the board. Um, other areas of the market which have uh, become sort of attractive are those businesses which sell high-end products or, or sort of the luxury retailers. Um, you'll see now a few names creeping into the portfolio which are related to luxury goods. So there you'll see we have now a small allocation to Richmond. We have had a significant uh, exposure to Coach for quite some time, the US retailer. Um, we also have now small allocations to Swatch and Hugo Boss. Um, and these are all businesses which have obviously gone out of favor for uh, reasons which relate to um, luxury goods coming off quite significantly. And those include obviously terrorist attacks which have caused less travel to areas like Europe where luxury goods sales are particularly strong. Obviously the sort of slowdown in the Chinese market and of course emerging market currencies having been very weak relative to the US dollar. So you'll start to see those sort of themes coming through. Um, overall, we do still have quite a bit of cash in the portfolio. If you look at the asset allocation, though this has decreased quite significantly, at the beginning of this year, we were sitting with just under 40% in cash. We now have 22% in cash. So we have been able to allocate quite significantly to the equity market, but we're still sitting with quite a lot of dry powder, which I think is a good thing uh, given sort of market volatility. It does present us with the opportunity to actually buy businesses as they do become cheap without having to sort of uh, adjust the portfolios. Uh, so overall, I think the portfolio is still meaningfully exposed to parts of the market which have rallied, but which still offer value, such as the resources sector. It's become increasingly diversified over time, which I think is always desirable. And you're sitting with a portfolio which is still very much exposed towards those businesses which are undervalued, still offer significant upside as a result. 
and which is very much tilted away from those kind of overheated parts of the market, which sort of represent significant risk of permanent capital loss at this point. I think that the cycle is starting to turn. It's still very early days in the value cycle, and we do believe that patience will be rewarded.